This conference will now be recorded. Hello students, so in this list class, like uh, we have a uh, as someone asked me to do this recorded session and we will this again. So yesterday we have to seen what is a thread. Okay. What is a thread? So the difference between process and thread is nothing but in process, each process will have each process will have to work. Separate address space. Okay. Separate address space. But threads will have we have common common address space. Okay. And contest switching between processes. Is expensive. Expensive, but here counter switching between threads is cheaper. And you can define thread as a unit of of process. Okay, as a unit of process, you can define a thread. And processes. Process is heavy, heavy weight, while thread is lightweight. So these are the difference between and this. Uh, these are the differences between process and process and the thread. Okay. As you see, the contest switching between the threads is cheaper. That's why we go for multi-threading. Rather than multi processing. Okay. We don't use multi processing here. We go, uh, means we can use multi processing, but uh, multi threading performance is better than the multi processing. That's why I go for multi threading concept. Okay. So now let's see uh, how, what's the life cycle of a thread? So, what is a life cycle of a thread? So whenever the thread is created, the different uh, states of a thread are nothing but new path, next is ready, runnable, next is running. or block and next is dead state. So these are the different states. So when the when can you say that thread is new or born state? Whenever you create a thread, the thread will be in this state. Okay. Now I want to start the thread. Whenever I call start method with thread, start method of the thread. The thread will enter into ready or the runnable state. So when I call the run method, which is present in the thread class, it the thread will enter into running state. Once the thread completes execution, so now I want. Now let's suppose that thread. Completed its execution. Once it uh, completes its execution, it will enter into dead state. Okay. Then it will go into wait or block state. When there is a request for input for a thread, then it may go into block state. Once the request has been fulfilled, I have a request completed. Then it, again it will enter into ready or runnable state. Okay. And when you want a thread to stop performing for a particular time, that is whenever you call sleep method, 
But suppose the sleep method will take time in milliseconds. Okay? Milliseconds. So if I uh, specify 5000 here, no, I want a particular thread to uh, sleep for uh, five seconds. Then it will go into waiting state. Once the sleep time expires, that is after five seconds, after five seconds, it will enter into ready or runnable state. So from that, again, it will go into run it. And next, it will go into dead state once the dead completes execution. So here you have to remember that from where does the execution starts uh, takes place. Whenever you call the start method, run method internally gets info. Start method internally calls run method. And run method will have the code of your thread, of your uh, thread implementation. What's the meaning of your thread implementation is what you want the uh, thread to perform, that whole code you'll be writing in the run method, okay? And if you want to just uh, suppose, what did I say here? Start method, you have to call the start method and start method internally calls the run method, right? Suppose I just want to call star run method directly with a start method, what will happen? You can call run method directly with a start method, but what will happen is there is no concept of multi-threading. There will always be a thread which will be running. She's in a runnable state always. That is nothing but main thread. Why the main thread will be always be in the execution and it will be always in running state because from main only the program execution starts, right? Program execution starts from the main. That's why always main thread will be running first and, and whatever code you write here. Suppose I call start, start method by using the thread object. If I, this is my thread object. Using thread object, if I call start method, what will happen? It will create a new stack where the run method will be executed. This will this will be a new stack. Okay. So if you create a new stack reference on which run method and whatever you code you wrote, uh, you want to execute for this particular thread, everything you'll be implementing in the run method, and run method will execute the particular code of the stack. Suppose rather than start method, if I call run method p dot run what will happen is the run code will get executed, but it will be on the same stack. Suppose this is a stack. Here already there is a main method which is getting executed. Main executed. Okay. And here there will be a run thread which is getting executed. So here there is only one thread which is getting executed. So there is no concept of multi threading, right? But whenever you call start, internally it will call the run method. So you need what you have to do there. So uh, start will open a new stack. So you will be having this reference. So main method, you have start method. So start method internally calls the run method. And what it will do, like this stack structure will be like this. There is already one stack which is already running. Here main thread is running. Here start, what it will do, start will be run and it will open will give control to it will open another uh, stack reference on which run method will be executed. In this, how many start methods you have, means how many object references you have, those many threads will be created. Okay. So let me suppose how can I create, how can I create a thread? Okay, create a thread. Thread can be created by extending by extending thread class or you can create it by implementing runnable interface. Okay. Runnable interface. Let's see the steps uh, one by one. The first method we are going to see extend by extending. Okay. So, what is the different steps? Is first you have to create a class which extends thread class. 
for extensive okay how can i create a class and write class a what i need to do i have to create a class which extends thread class right thread is an inbuilt class is an inbuilt class class already declared in the so as a extends thread like this i'll create it and second step what you have to do second step is you need to override run method okay you need to override run method so how can you implement that as i told thread life cycle has uh, three thread classes these methods okay start run sleep etc okay but whenever you want to uh, write the code for the thread what the thread is going to work and you need to implement that particular code in run if i don't override run method what will happen is if i don't override this what will happen thread internally thread class internally extends runnable interface okay extends sorry it implements runnable interface implements runnable interface okay so thread actually it is internally implementing runnable interface in runnable interface you have only one method that is nothing but run okay run is nothing as it is an interface it is nothing but an abstract method right what is the meaning of that method abstract method does not have any method does not have implementation it okay? does not have any body definition okay it does not define any body does not have any uh, implementation of a method okay? that is that is the meaning of abstract method you will have the signature but you will not have the body for that method okay so if i don't override run method what will happen thread method will call run method of this runnable interface which doesn't does not have anything it's just uh, it's just an empty error method right it just goes into that and come out of it it's a do not method so you need to have whenever you are going to create a thread class first you have to create a class instance next you have to override run method okay. so that's what we have explained here first you have to create a class which extends thread class class how can you create a class which extends thread class class a extends thread next step you have to do you have to override the run method this step is must if you don't override run method it will call run method of runnable interface runnable interface which is nothing but a do nothing method and it does not have any logic okay so you you have to override the run method so now is once you override the run method what you have to do you have to create an instance of above class okay so we have created already a class which extends thread right so here what you have to do you need to override the run method override run method so here i will write some logic System dot out of print element. Hello, hello, child. Something like this. Okay. Child. Next, I will just close it. Now, what I have to do? I have to create an instance for this class, right? Of the above class. So I need to create an instance of A. So I am taking another class B, where I will be writing public static void main string args. so here i need to create that instance so how can i create that instance a a equals to new a okay and what you have to do now you have to start the thread right when when will the run method get executed once you start the thread how can i start the thread using a dot start so when i will say a dot start it will internally call the run method it will go to this run method and it will execute okay in this way you create it you can create a thread using thread class by extending thread class okay now let's see the second 
That's it, hope we can do. That is by implementing runnable interface. Runnable interface. I told you that interface is an abstract method, right? Runnable interface will have an abstract method that is nothing but only run. Like thread has many methods. Runnable interface only has one method that is nothing but run. So first what we have to do, the first step what we need to do is you have to create a class with this runnable index. And second step is you need to write run method. Okay. Run method you need to over. Third step is create an instance of O class. That is, whatever class is extending runnable interface, you need to create a class uh, object for this instance. You have to create an object for this class. Okay. O class. Fourth step is pass the instance of the class. Thread to thread of preference of the preference. And last step, what you have to do? You have to start the thread. Okay. Now let's see these steps one by one. So, first step, what did I say? You have to create a class which extends which extends runnable interface, right? Now I'm saying class B extends runnable. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It is an uh, interface, right? So it will be when it is a class, you will be using extends. Class B implements runnable interface. So this is my first step. Second step, what I have to do? I have to override run method, right? Public void run. Run method. So I'm just using a for loop. Here I'm for in i equals to zero, i less than five, i plus plus. What I need to do? I need to print system dot outer interval and child. Okay. Then later, what I have to do? This is nothing but second step. That is override the run method. Okay. First step, what I have to do? I have to create an instance. Third step is create an instance of the class. Right? Instance of the class. So that I will do in public. Let me go to the next uh, page so that we can get it here. So here I'm going to write public static void name string log So here what I have to do, I have to create I need to create an instance of the class, right? So that is what I'm doing here. What is my class? My class name is B. Now I have to create an instance for this. Okay. So I'm writing B. B equals to new. New B. Okay. So this is an in, uh, instance for. This is an instance. Creation. For. This class so B class, okay. But here you can see that B is implementing which interface runnable interface. As B, we have created the instance for the B class, as it is implementing runnable interface, it will become this will become B will become runnable object. So what we have to do, the last step is nothing but we have to pass this 
runnable object to thread class, right? That is what we are going to do. We are going to create a thread class, right? Uh, we are going to create an object for the thread class, and for the thread class, we will be passing runnable object as a parameter. Thread. So what is my runnable object reference field? So it B will be passed as a parameter. So this step is like passing runnable object runnable object as a parameter parameter for class. Okay. So once last step, what you have to do? This is the fourth step. Last step, what you have to do? You have to start the thread, thread, thread using the thread instance. I can call the start method. So here you are saying start. Uh, this step will start the thread. Starts the big thread, and then you close this. So, so this is the code. So t dot start will internally call the run method of which class? It will call the run method of b class. Okay, let's go there. In the b class, you have written run. You have overridden run method, right? So child rate will be printed for uh, five times. That is your output. Okay. So in this way, you can create. Uh, in this way, you can create uh, threads by either by using its uh, extends uh, by or uh, by or. Uh, you can create it right either by using thread class or by implementing a runnable interface. Okay, let me show you the programs for this. Then you will get a clear understanding. So as you see here, as you see what we are doing, we are creating a class my thread, which is extending thread class. Okay, we are creating a thread by using first method. That is nothing but here we are saying class my thread should be a class as it is uh, as as be a thread as it is extending thread class. Okay. Second step, what we have to do? I told that we have to override the run method. Okay. There we are sending a message. I am printing a message saying that it has the child thread has to be displayed ten times. Okay. So in run method, uh, you will write the whole logic. So next, what you have to do? So I am taking another class which has main method, and here main method. Uh, third step is like you have to create an instance for the class as a thread. Okay. So here my thread class is nothing but name of my thread, uh, thread class is uh, this one my thread. So I have to create an object for this. Creating an instance means that you have to create an object for my thread. So you are you are saying my thread t1 equals to new my thread. So once you have created, what you have to do last step is you have to start the thread. If you don't use the start method, you cannot start the thread. So to execute the thread, you have to use Start method that is using the thread instance that is nothing but t1. Using the t1, you will call this. So in this main method, you are giving a you have to print main thread 10 times. As you see here, what I'm going to do is I want this output to be like main thread should be printed after some time, then child thread needs to be printed. So for that, what I'm doing, I am suspending my thread class to some time using sleep method. I have given thousand milliseconds, so it is nothing but it. Uh, the child red will be in sleeping state till one second. Okay. 
and main thread i am making it to sleep for 2 seconds okay so once uh, the chain thread will be executed once and main thread will be executed after 2 seconds okay so here one thing you have to remember sleep will do an interrupted exception that you have to do the exception handling as it is a interrupted exception and checked exception you can do the exception handling either by using try attach block or throws key i have whenever using throws you have to use it in the method okay the method uh, we have in multi thread example one is not but this one main main method that's why we have specified here throws exception if you want you can give here an interrupted exception i just give super class for all the exception classes okay next here uh, in the my thread class i have uh, enclosed this particular statement in try block So for try block, you need to have a catch statement associated with uh, the particular exception. Interrupted exception is my exception. Name. So I'm printing whenever the, there is an exception, this particular child thread will be uh, got interrupted message will display. Okay, let's execute this code. So it is on the desktop. The jump button. My three thread example one is my program name. Let's try to find it. For next, I need to execute it. Yeah, no, my program. So here you can see that main thread got executed once, and it went into sleeping state. Chain thread is getting executed once, and it got executed two times. as you see here why it got executed two times is nothing but uh, main thread uh, has executed once and got into sleeping state it is in sleeping state in two threads right and uh, for two seconds it is in sleeping state in that time the chain thread got executed okay so like that uh, all the threads will be executed so as you see here the chain thread got executed 10 times chain thread 1 2 3 4 6 7 8 9 so when the chain thread all got executed next the leftover thread will be main thread that's why it's getting executed here okay so in this way you can so you can do the three threading so here how many threads are getting executed one is main thread other is my thread okay two threads are getting executed Like that, the same the same program you can implement using runnable interface. So how you can do that? Class my runnable implements runnable interface, and I told the runnable interface has only one method that is nothing but run method. In run method, you are implementing the same logic. You want child thread to be printed uh, and and next what I am doing? I am I am taking a class here, and that class has main method. So first what I have to do? The first step is like creating a class which uh, implements run interface. Next, second step is overriding the run uh, or uh, run method. Third step is here you are what you are doing. You are creating an instance. What you have created? My class name is my runnable. Create an instance here. My runnable R one equals me my run. As this class is implementing runnable interface. This is nothing but an R1 is nothing but a runnable object. I told that you have to pass a runnable object as an argument to the class. What you are doing here? So once you have passed that, you have to start. How can you start the thread using the start method? Okay, the one dot start. And then you are printing a message saying the main thread needs to be executed ten times. Okay, let's execute this code. My program multi thread example two dot Java. This also executes as a similar. Okay. As I didn't clip any, you know, as I didn't specify any sleep uh, method here. Once the main thread got executed, all the output got displayed at once only because I didn't use any sleep state, uh, sleep method here. So main thread got executed. And uh, child thread got executed. In middle, you can see that child thread also got executed sometimes. Actually, what will happen is there might be a situation where uh, the thread scheduler uh, receives two thread at once. At that time, it will decide which thread to execute depending on some criteria. 
the criteria will have some parameters like depending on the priority set to that particular thread, that thread will be executed. If the thread has more priority, then uh, uh, the thread which has more priority will have uh, more uh, means uh, more preference. So that thread will be executed by thread scheduler. As here, the two threads have the same priority and, is, and there is no specification of which thread needs to be executed. Thread scheduler may pick any one of the threads. That's why randomly you can see. Uh, you can see that after the main, uh, in between, uh, not that uh, you can observe that after the execution main thread, uh, child thread is getting is not getting executed. In between, child thread is also getting picked up and main thread is continuing the execution. Okay, so that which particular thread needs to be picked up is decided by the thread scheduler depending upon. Uh, priority and different uh, preferences which uh, which thread consumes less space or uh, time less time that particular thread will be given preference. Okay. So let me show you. Uh, so this is the uh, these are the examples for creation of the threads by you by using two techniques. I will show seven a. So in the seven a, what they are asking us to do is they are asking us to. Um, they are asking us to create uh, three threads. So that is uh, one thread should be cute. Uh, we have to create three threads. Just, I just show you the thread one. What they ask us to do. So in task seven, write a program that creates three threads. Okay, you have to create either by extending the thread class or by implementing another interface. Next, what you have to do? He is saying that first thread displays good morning every one second, and second thread displays hello every two seconds, and third thread should display welcome every three seconds. So here you have to make the first thread to sleep one second. Okay, second thread needs to display hello every two seconds. So it has to discuss, uh, it has to be slept for two seconds and third thread displays well three seconds. It has to be uh, it has to sleep for three seconds. Let's see that code. So it is task code seven eight. Okay, here if you see, we have to create how many threads? Three threads. So, FT is nothing but uh, abbreviation for we are consuming the first thread. So, we using, we are creating a thread by implementing runnable interface. So, once we implement it, we need to override the run method. So, in run method, what you do is infinite loop. That's why you are supposed to while of loop. So, here I am um, specifying a message that I should uh, good morning. The first thread should display good morning message every one second. Okay. That's why we are saying system out of print LM. and sleep of how many seconds? One second. Thread dot sleep we are using as we are, it will uh, throw an exception. It will uh, throw an raise an exception, interrupt the exception. You have to enclose that in right block. Okay? Like that, you have to create the second thread. In second thread, what did they say? The second thread should display hello every two seconds. Okay. So here you are taking a for uh, what infinite loop. And you are specifying system dot print l and hello, and it has to be for how many seconds? Two seconds. That's why you are specified as two thousand milliseconds. Okay. Now this or uh, this statement needs to be enclosed in try and catch block. Okay. As it rows, uh, it raises uh, interrupted exception. Like the third thread you are creating here, that implements standard interface, and you are overriding the method. It has the logic which will call which will display welcome every three seconds. So here, so here uh, in uh, the third thread should have run method which has the core system the print LM welcome and it has to select for how many seconds? Three seconds. That's why you're mentioning as three thousand milliseconds. Okay. And as a sleep, uh, what does it do? It will raise an interrupt exception. You are doing a exception hand you try and catch. Once you have created all this, you have to create an instances for those threads, right? So you're creating the instances for these threads. And these are nothing but runnable object. What you have to do, you have to pass this runnable object as parameters to thread class. That is what you have to do. 
you are creating a red a red one object, red two object, and red three object for each one of these threads. So once the threads are done, you have to start the thread using start method. Thread one dot start, thread two dot start, thread three dot start. Okay, let's execute this. So my code in Java lab class seven. So, like this, we'll get the output. So, I compiled it, I didn't execute it. So, Java class 7. So, if you see, you're getting good morning, hello, welcome, good morning, good morning. So, you have to, here there is no specific order that good morning has to come first, hello needs to, uh, what, uh, welcome needs to, be, uh, needs to be printed last. Here, we didn't set any priority. So, thread scheduler, what it will do? Uh, it will pick any one of the threads, uh, whatever it might be. It, it will just pick a random thread and it will execute. But you have to check according to the sleeping time, whatever specified, according to that, that particular thread uh, goes into sleeping state. I hope you understood and thank you. Any doubts, you can reach out to any person.